So you just asked me to define a mathematician, which is hard. There's the research only mathematician, which is basically playing around with abstract objects and you get paid for it. Uh, so in a way you could say that we are paid to have fun. <laughs> When I was a kid, actually, my career plan was to be a witch. I don't mean Harry Potter witch, I mean like a mean one, mean and ugly with like a crooked nose. And then when I realized that that was not physically possible, I decided I wanted to be a teacher. And then when I was 14, my mother brought home this math magazine and I learned that there exists this thing called research. And that seemed cool. I started when I was a grad student. I was studying something that we call algebraic geometry, which we usually describe as studying the solutions of systems of polynomial equations. I used to just write stuff out algebraically. I remember I had this, I met this professor at Chicago who just asked me, can you draw the picture for me or what you did? And I told him I never draw pictures. And he just looked at me like I was from another planet. And when I was explaining something algebraically, they would need to just take it and go away for a day, and then they would come back and we would have understood it, but it was too slow. Like I was very impatient to tell them what I was thinking of, so I just started translating myself. Here I can check it on an example in two seconds. So I just forced myself to think more geometrically, and then I, when I told them things geometrically, they understood immediately what I meant. Yeah, and okay. then we we only think of that boundary because it tells you everything about the geometry okay. already. If I if I had chosen a different plane, imagine I choose the vertical line. I moved to India when I was one month old. We left, I was a bit younger than two. And then we moved to Mexico when I was two and a half. And we stayed for five years, so I do remember Mexico. My father went on, he lived in Lebanon, in Romania, in Canada but my mother decided she wanted us to just go to a school in France and just go to the same school. So I must have met Sophie, I don't remember the interaction exactly, but I think I met her at tea time, probably very early into my first year. But I just remember she was like very friendly and very like joking around with graduate students in a way that faculty usually aren't. I think oftentimes when you do research in math, it's easy to get caught up in like all these other questions, like, oh, am I smart enough? Like, am I doing the right things? Am I spending my time the right way? Like, all these things that are a little bit out of your control. But Sophie's answer to any of this is sort of just like, just work hard, it'll be fine. Which is like, a, I think a good mentality, because you're like, okay, all these things are out of my control. All you have to do is just like sit down, work, and like whatever happens is whatever happens. Most of the time you can't do what you're trying to do and you're just beating yourself because you can't do it and you feel stupid. And I always wonder about the super strong people who seem to do everything effortlessly. Do they also feel that way? But most of us, we feel inadequate, I think, all, almost all the time. So that's not a reason to give up. I mean, I like very much admire Sophie and want to be like Sophie in certain regards. And it's cool to watch someone you admire and respect so much do these sort of everyday things and not seem so like elite and unattainable. <laughs>